Okay, let's get going. I'm Sally Kleinfeld. I'm from Jazz Carta, and I'm here wearing the t-shirt from my very first Flown conference in 2006 in Seattle. Uh, one member of the audience here, Victor, was there as well. Uh, it was a wonderful conference. Uh, I've been involved in the phone community ever since then. Um, today I'm going to describe the kinds of situations where you really, really need a plone site. Nothing else will do. Um, of course, plone is great, and there are all sorts of good reasons to use plone uh, for any kind of site. Um, and if you browse uh, on YouTube, the plone channel for World Plone Day this year, last year, any of the plone conferences, you'll see uh, plenty of examples of people who've chosen to use plone uh, for really exciting uh, sites and, and exciting results and there are all sorts of reasons to use it. But today I'm going to talk about some particularly complex situations that Plone is a natural fit for. Uh, and you would not be able to use some other platform without, uh, without a lot of custom work. So, okay, you need a new web website. Um, if, your, if your site is kind of a standard site with a, kind of no unique requirements, kind of a run-of-the-mill type site, you have lots and lots of choices. Plone, of course, but also WordPress, the very ubiquitous choice. Uh, lots of other CMSs, old ones, new ones, headless options, hosted options, software as a service options, no code options. It's kind of mind blowing all the options. Well, we hope you use Plone, but there are probably a variety of considerations that will drive your decision about what platform you want to use for your website. Things that have really nothing to do with technology, like, for example, I like this designer, and they work with System X. So, Or a friend of mine recommended this website builder, and so I, I trust that friend, and I'll use that person. Or uh, I really want to stick with something I'm familiar with, or I really want to try something new. Well, maybe that new thing could be blown. Um, but in any event, there are lots of, there are lots of different possibilities. But what if? Um, your website is not a sort of standard run-of-the-mill type website. It has a little bit different kinds of features. I want to go over the kinds of website features that really should make you consider using Plone. So let's start with this. My site has members that join up, uh, and they have profiles that other members can see. Profiles have little biographical details, maybe some image, a photograph, whatever. Um, that's, that's a fairly common requirement. With the role of editor can create and edit new content on the site. Whereas members of the group with the role of reviewer can see that content and approve the new content. Well, really, there are a fair number of systems that provide this, what I would call a basic publishing workflow. Uh, often you'll need to add an add-on because it doesn't come out of the box, but you can find it. Uh, Plone provides these kind of publishing workflows, simple ones, more complicated ones, a number of them right out of the box. But it also supports arbitrary custom workflows and roles. So, for example, um, thinking of a site focused on some kind of scientific research, uh, members of the group uh, with a role of researcher uh, can maybe enter data about a specimen that is in a, in a work in progress state, so they can, can you know, edit and add and add continuously and add more data. Whereas members with the role of, I'll call it curator, um, can move it to a state, say called completed or some other name, I'm not very good at these names, but anyway, to some state where it can't be changed. It's like, here it is, this is it, we've, we've defined this specimen as much as we're going to. Or another totally different example, an association website. Uh, so maybe members of a group uh, with the role of paid member, who paid for their membership, they can see premium content. 
So, okay, but what was this about specimens and premium content? What was that all about? Well, let's talk about different types of content. What if there are different types of content on the site and these groups of users need to manage those custom content types in specific ways? Um, from the previous examples, specimens, a content type which curators and researchers would interact with differently. Premium content is another, possibly another content type, which certain, only certain roles of users with certain roles can see. Or taking a totally different kind of situation, maybe it's a outdoor activity type website. Well, activities, an activity might be a custom content type, which certain roles can uh, manage and create, and certain other roles can sign up for. So a really nice feature of Plone is that it's very easy to create custom content types and they can be of any complexity. So just a little aside, a little bit more about custom types, custom content types. They can have any number of, of uh, different types of fields. I have been in part of projects where people have wanted to have literally hundreds of different metadata fields. Not necessarily a good idea, but it can be done. Um, any, any number of fields can be simple strings, rich text, numbers, all different kinds of numbers, booleans, images, single multiple selects, you name it. Um, and for the uh, pick lists, you can define extensive vocabularies, you know, tailored to your particular problem area. With a, um, with a simple add-on, um, you can add um, a feature so that um, an, a content object can have a geolocation, a latitude, longitude, so that it can be shown on a map. It's a pretty cool feature, not built into Plone, but pretty easy to add. Very easy to add, actually. <laughs> and, and custom types can even act like a folder. So they can contain files, they can contain images, and they can even contain other content, other content types, other types of content, like there could be a sort of a parent-ish sort of content type with, with sort of child type content types that go into it. Um, so when we have these features that we've, we've talked about now so far, um, we have members, we have groups and roles, we have workflows, and now we have custom content types. Now we're in the zone that Plone really excels at. But, what if in addition to all this, oops, excuse me, what if the information architecture of the site, sort of the structure of the hierarchy of the content on the site, state chapters of the association. And they, these members of that group only have permission to create content within their state chapter, within that section of the site. And within that state chapter, there might be different sections for blog, posts, and events. Um, and only event content types can be added to the event section. Only blog posts can be added to the blog section. Um, and there could be a special role even if you wanted to do this <clears throat> so that cert only certain members can create events and certain other members can create blog posts. So there can be different groups of people who manage these sets of things. This, obviously, this complexity grows with the size of the organization, the complexity of what you're trying to do. Well, I really want to emphasize here, this is just normal clone configuration. <laughs> There's no custom work required to have this kind of members, groups, roles, our information architecture with different sections of the site by having different permissions. So that, that is something that Plone can do really well. Um, really, no other content management system offers this sort of fine-grained role and location-aware uh, member features, I, I don't think, anyway. Certainly not easily. <laughs> um, and if you have that sort of website, then you really need so here are some kind of typical types of sites that need these types of features. 
um, membership associations, that was one of the examples. Academic and scientific institutions um, can be fairly large, complex organizations with these kinds of requirements, government agencies. Similarly, uh, in general, large sites with lots of content, lots of users, um, and a complex information architecture, um, these are the kinds of sites that can really benefit from this side of clone. Um, and again, you can browse the YouTube channels and find lots of fun examples of these uh, sites with these kind of rich features. Plus, if you have a clone site, you also get security, um, pretty superior security, low number of vulnerabilities uh, found in Python and Plone. Uh, Plone is a very mature product, uh, so it comes with pretty good security record. Scalability handles tens and even hundreds of thousands of pages, images, tens of thousands of, us of members of users. Uh, member, yeah. Um, permission aware search. So we've talked about how different users can see and do certain things with certain content types and other users maybe can't even see it, like the normal user can't see the premium content, but the special paid member can see the premium content. Well, Plone has a built-in search feature and, this, and the search feature is permission aware. So if the normal user Googles for, or Googles, <laughs> searches for a particular topic, they'll only, they'll only get results of the things that they actually have permission to see, whereas the special paid member will see the special premium content. Um, it's pretty easy to use. Um, content editors generally find Plone quite user-friendly. Um, there are two different front ends, the options that are supported. It's sort of React page builder, React-based page builder with a sort of blocks architecture, and an also more classic CMS like you think of from classic CMS days, also that kind of page editing experiences. But, but both those experiences provide edit in place, you know, not, you don't go kind of go over here and edit content. You actually are on the site and you're in the place and you edit it there, edit in place. What you see is what you get, that kind of editing experience. All of Plone's functionalities accessible through a REST API, which can be used to create special purpose uh, presentations of content, mobile applications, you can even use it to make print materials, so handy. Plone is available localized, I guess, There's a, tr Plone has a true open source model, by which I mean that its code is owned and protected by a nonprofit foundation, the Plone Foundation. Uh, no for-profit companies are uh, involved in this. It's a 100% community-led project. Um, so we think of it as a, a somewhat rare type of uh, true open source project. So, use Plone, especially when you really need to. I think I'll end there. <laughs>